When you hear of the term called an electron gun, you might be thinking of an evil weapon. But in fact, it was something that was probably in your grandparents' basement, all right? found in this thing, a good old tube TV. And you might notice these tube TVs, they are very, very uh, wide or very deep. All right? And the reason for the depth is because each of these TVs had a long tube and it tapered to a very small point at the back. And that's why the shape of it isn't a perfect rectangle. Instead, they taper the back smaller. All right. And the important thing about this design over here is at the back, there is this thing back here called an electron gun. And its whole purpose is to shoot pew pew little electrons. That's why it's called an electron gun. Uh, another part of this is that it's called a cathode ray tube, and it's because of the setup of the system, as you can see in this picture over here. All right. The intention of it is to shoot out cathodes, which are effectively are electrons. Okay, so let's just break down the science behind how these electron guns work. At the back of the electron, there is a heating element. And the purpose of the heating element is that, as you may know, at higher temperatures, uh, atoms start moving faster and faster and faster. And if you make them move fast enough, uh, the atoms may kick out, but more importantly, the stuff outside of the atoms may kick out, which are the electrons. All right, so the back of the electron gun, there's always a heating element. In fact, if you ever take a look at the back of these TVs with the grill openings, if you see carefully, because uh, you're at that right angle, you'll notice that it does glow red hot. And even if you can't see it, after about 15 minutes, you might notice the back of the TV is very hot. All right, and it's because there's that heating element heating up uh, the plates such that the electrons can become ejected from it. All right. And once the electrons eject from it, it'll go in all directions, but you want to focus it in one direction. And that's why you'll have two separate plates, a negative plate and a positive plate. And the electron hates the negative plate and loves a positive plate. So a bunch of them start moving forwards, but there's a tiny opening only allowing a select few to pass through that opening. And now you have an electron gun. That's all it does. All right, it allows an electron to move from plate A to point B and exit out at a very fast velocity. So let's go through a sample calculation. All right, let's say that the potential difference between these two plates is incredibly high at 20,000 volts, right, between these two points over here. Find the final speed of the electron. And that's all the information that's given to you. Okay, so let's start solving this. First off, we know that uh, the work in, in accelerating an electron is equal to charge times electric field times the distance of separation of the two plates. We also know that it's the work causing it to accelerate from zero to a final speed, right? So work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Combine them together and we end up getting a formula that looks like this. Work is equal to change in kinetic energy, which is equal to Q times electric field times distance. The mass of the electron will be given to you, 911 times 10 to the negative 31. And when you look at the formula, you might say, eh, I got most of this stuff, but hey, hold on a second. I, I don't have distance, all right? The distance of these two plates isn't given to me, all right? But what we do know is that the electric field is based upon a voltage and a plate separation, all right? E is equal to V divided by delta D. So we can take this part over here and sub it into here. And once we sub it in, we notice that our Ds can actually divide each other out. Well, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that our, our, our electron gun could be very long or could be very short. It doesn't matter because it will still abide by the conservation of energy. All right, what do I mean by that? Well, with a longer and wider plate, you notice that the E field intensity will decrease, right? Because the distance of separation between the two plates is really far away. So my E field will be a lot lower when they're further away versus when they're close to each other. All right, we will create a, a much higher electric field. All right, and pretty much those two effects will nullify each other out. So whether if you make it uh, very close together with a high E field intensity or very far from E field intensity, the distance separation don't, doesn't really matter at the end. They will end up dividing each other out. So really the work at the end of the day in, in the accelerating electron through a gun is just simply equal to the charge times the potential difference. All right, that's all it effectively works out to at the end of the day. Okay. Uh, another thing I crossed out is that initially the electron was starting from rest. So our MVI goes to zero and we're left with a much cleaner formula that we can just rearrange, sub in what we know and get to our final answer. All right. So great. We find out the muzzle velocity of this electron gun. Well, what can we do with this? 
Uh, one thing just to point out is that the electron gun is useless in regular atmospheric air. All right, and that's because if you let the electrons escape, all it'll end up doing is that it'll be absorbed by the atmospheric air. Yeah, it'll ionize the air and it won't go very far. Done deal. All right. If we really want the electron gun to do its job and shoot an electron over, you know, a couple of centimeters, you know, to the width of the TV, then we got to make sure that the inside of the TV has no particles in it, no air particles in it. So it is a vacuum that's in there, okay, inside the tube TVs. That's why if you drop them by accident, kind of does this imploding sound. Okay, it goes while it's allowing all the atmospheric air enter back into it. All right, so it has to operate in a vacuum. And on the far end of the vacuum, there is a plate that which is sensitive to electrons. So when electrons bombard against the plate, it's covered in an agent called phosphorus. Don't confuse that with phosphorus. Phosphorus is an element. Phosphorus is a compound, all right, that lights up whenever a bombardment of electrons hit against it or any high energy that hits it, it will start glowing. Initially, the chemical composition made it glow to a bright green, but they eventually figured out how to make phosphorus that will glow red and uh, blue, all right, creating the entire color spectrum. But the old school computers, well, we just glue green because it was the most efficient chemical composition to make. All right, so there you go. There is the electron gun, and, uh, and all, all of the electrons end up hitting one plate in the plate, so you see a really bright green dot. Not really good for creating any text or whatnot. So what you want to do is you want to cause uh, the electrons to deflect upwards and downwards, and eventually left and right as well. In this animation over here, I just simply have them deflect upwards and downwards. So take a look at this picture right now and the general convention for positive is red and negative would be uh, black or blue. All right, so think about the setup over here. As the electron uh, es escapes an electron gun, which way will the electron deflect? Towards the top or towards the bottom? Remember, electrons hate other electrons. So the electron will hate the negative plate. So if you guess that it'll deflect downwards, you are correct. And what if we flip the plates around the other way around? I guess uh, by process elimination, it should go the other way around, and it will. Remember, the electrons will hate the negative plate, but the electrons will love the positive plate. Now, for one thing, if electrons aren't traveling fast enough, it is possible for electrons just to move up and smack against the plate and be absorbed by it. And thereby, you'll never see the electron light up the phosphorus in the far end. Okay, But in this case over here, the electrons are traveling ridiculously fast. All right, So they will make it through the E field. Okay, and uh, that's effectively how uh, J.D. Thompson was able to find out uh, the charge to the mass ratio of this thing called an electron, all right, by creating up this apparatus over here. Of course, it's a one dimensional TV because the electrons will just simply align up over here. Where if you have a greater potential difference, it will deflect upwards even more, and if it has a weaker potential difference, it'll deflect less, all right. And he had this setup over here, which will allow. Um, a compound to eject its electrons. All right, that's his gas discharge tube back in the early 1900s or 1897, late late 1900s, late 19th century. Sorry. Okay. Um, of course, today we will have plates that go like this, and then plates that go parallel with each other. That way, it can deflect and become, you know, a two-dimensional image on the far end. All right, so you know, so that we can see more about this stuff over here, let's just go and add more givens. Okay, let's say that the from before, because we already calculated out that uh, the buzzle velocity of this was at 8.4 times 10 to the seven meters per second. So really crazy fast. All right, and the length of the parallel plates was at uh, 7.5 centimeters, and the e field intensity of these plates was at uh, 10,000 newtons per coulomb. Given that these values over here question is how much will the electron deflect once it exits out of the plate okay what is the delta dy if we were to ignore uh, gravity gravity does play a part in it but as it's traveling so quickly the deflection uh, due to gravity won't be much at all in the time that it takes to get to that point there okay so let's go and calculate this out what do we need to know well but we need to first know that uh, the moment the electron as it approaches this point over here uh, how much time does it exhibit while it's traveling through uh, this parallel plate here right and the time that it travels well because it's traveling at a constant velocity in the x dimension we know that delta t is equal to v over oops sorry delta d over v all right 
So this will be our LX in this case over here. And then we have our VX. Okay, so we could figure out the time. Kind of jumped ahead. Let's go according to the PowerPoint. Uh, the PowerPoint uh, will solve for time afterwards. So the first thing it wants to figure out is uh, the rate of acceleration, okay, as it deflects. Well, to find out the acceleration, we need to find out the force, right? So the for the net force acting on the charge is equal to the charge times the E field intensity, and the F net is also equal to uh, mass times acceleration. So you can group them together. So the acceleration in the y dimension is equal to the charge times the electric field intensity divided by the mass. Okay, so now we have our Ay. Next thing to do is to pull out good old kinematics. All right, if we know that V in the y dimension is initially at zero, then we can pull out the third kinematic equation. This term goes to zero. And time we just mentioned about is equal to this. So we can sub it in, slowly rearrange the equation, sub all the values in, and then we can find out what our delta dy is. Give you guys a moment to figure that out. Did you get this tiny little number? Yeah, it's not going to deflect very much. You're not going to have a very big TV in this case over here. All right. Um, now, one thing just to point out is that the moment the electron exits out of here, let me just draw the picture. Once the electron exits out of here, uh, beyond the parallel plate, it will be experiencing Newton's first law. In other words, it will just be traveling in a straight line Okay, due to inertia. So the deflection only happens until it exits, and that's it. Okay. Now, if you want to find out the angle of the deflection, please be careful. A lot of people by accident think that it's equal to this triangle inside here, but that's not the case. Remember, it's traveling at a particular velocity here. You know the Vx, and you can also solve for your Vy. So the true angle of the exit is actually equal to uh, the tan inverse of the Vy over Vx. So make sure you calculate out what the Vy is. Don't do delta dy over dx because it's not going to give you the same answer. All right, you need the inertia of its of its trajectory to solve for where it will travel. And if you want a bigger TV, then well, make sure that the screen is much further away. And that's the problem about those old two TVs. If you want a bigger TV, it just has to get longer and longer and longer. Now you may have seen those newer models that came out quite a bit afterwards, which they they looked quite a bit shorter. I'm just drawing a little picture of it, and they looked kind of like this. You may have seen this in your uh, grandparents basement or in your parents basement okay so it looked like that it was very tall probably about four feet tall but it wasn't that deep it was probably only about two feet deep well they cheated all they did was that they placed the tube on the floor and then there's a mirror in the back to deflect off onto the freno lens of uh, the front of the TV all right so that's their hack of making the TVs not so wide if you wanted a 40 inch wide TV uh, back in the 80s or 90s all right so that's it for today's lesson really uh, it's just applications of the e-fields featuring the good old cathode ray tube. In fact, we're not done with it yet. In a future episode, we'll revisit the cathode ray tube one more time. Aside from that, uh, go through your homework, and the next day will be a lab. So the next video here will be the lab instructions. So I'll catch you in the next episode. And I almost forgot to see the answer key to the homework in the course pack. Here's one. Here's another one. Another one. Another one. And uh, here are some answers from the textbook in case you want to see my version in the answer key. All right, catch you in the next episode.